Well, it's a bright and sunny New Brunswick morning. I can hear the cicadas in the background, and I'm at the cabin, no longer in PEI, although I still have those fantastic potatoes. And it's time for a new project. Now, I've been doing things both outside the cabin and inside, but there are some things I've needed for a long time, and I think I can make a project today that'll address both issues, inside and out, and, wait for this, there's a connection to my old A-frame camper. So, hope you enjoy this. Time to get working. There are two items that I've been wanting at the cabin for some time. And the first one is a bench for the deck. You know, something I can sit out here, just put it up against the cabin and look out at the view. Uh, low maintenance, weather resistant. And the second one is inside the cabin, I don't have anything decent to sit on. I don't have a couch or a sofa or anything like that. Something that was comfortable, hopefully stylish, but small enough that I can still move around because I don't have a lot of space there. And I thought of these two needs and I thought, well, why don't you just make one and just make it multi-use? And I think that's what I'm gonna to try to do today. What I have for materials is I have these uh, old trunks of saplings. Well, they're, they were young saplings, but they've been drying for about a year, a year and a half, and so they're perfect to use for wood. And I also have these slabs, curved one side, still has the bark on it. You get these from mills. They're glad to get rid of them for free because they don't need them. They throw them out. But they have a flat side on one side, and you can see putting those two together, that would be a good basis for the seat. Those are the materials, free of course, that's the way I like them. As far as uh, what tools I need, uh, I'm probably going to use the miter saw because I've got a battery, it's been sunny, so uh, I can use power tools. But unfortunately, I mean this would have been free, but I did have to buy at least one tool. So the new tool I'm referring to is this, the do-it-yourself log furniture tool kit by Lumberjack Tools. Uh, by the way, before I go any further, I bought this. It's not sponsored. I don't know these guys. If I like it, I hate it. It doesn't matter because I am totally unbiased in my opinion here. But I think I can use something like this. It was a little high priced. However, it might be worth it. Let's see. And what it is, is it's for if you're building log furniture. This is a tenon cutter. It's a three inch, no, sorry, it's a one and a half inch, but it'll cut a three inch log. And uh, this massive thing, you put this in your drill. It's got these sharp blades here. It twirls around, and yes, I did try it. And that is a tenon. Now the tenon goes in the mortise, which they include a one and a half inch Forstner bit. So it's a one and a half inch tenon and a one and a half inch mortise. Um, seems great. I did a little test, it seems to work. Uh, what you get with this is um, instructions, which are really needed. <laughs> Believe me, don't just play with this by yourself. Uh, you could get hurt. And it also has some log furniture plans. Um, neat stuff. Stool. Uh, already built one, but thank you anyway. So uh, it seems like it's, you know, it's worthwhile. There's enough branches that I have to cut down and dead wood that I'm sure there are other projects, but let's go with this one first. The first step is to cut those sapling trunks down to size. To use the tenon cutter, you need a log vise. I didn't have one, so improvised with half a cinder block, wood ends, and some clamps. You need a corded half inch power drill for the tenon cutter. It takes a little practice. Next is the long process of removing bark. I use a machete, but others may prefer a draw knife or axe. Then 
This can be a very tedious process, and be careful not to give yourself a vasectomy. Knots were removed with an oscillating saw. With enough practice, the bark will be flying like a samurai on a caffeine buzz. Unfortunately, a lot of my wood was infested with beetle larvae. They were given an eviction notice. Because of this, it's a good idea to spray the wood with diluted bleach once the bark has been removed. If it doesn't kill the maggots, at least it'll make them a brighter white. I prefer my lithium drill for those mortise holes. Well, I've been working all day on this, and uh, so far it's turning out to be a little bit more difficult than I expected. One of the problems I encountered was the wood, and uh, just peeling off the bark took a lot of time, and I wish I'd peeled off the bark before, because I left it outside, and what has happened is the beetle larva got in underneath it, and they destroyed a lot of the wood. So uh, I'm just trying to salvage, salvage what's left. Uh, my fault on that. But the other problem I'm having is with the tenon cutter. Um, it makes, it's supposed to be about a, one and a half inches is what it's supposed to be. But because the wood is soft and uh, the kit does come with a one and a half inch Forstner bit, when I put one in the other, unfortunately it's really loose. Um, it's just a matter of the wood and the, the cutter does vibrate quite a bit. If it had been maple or oak or something, it probably would have been a tighter fit. But my solution was I got out my one and three eighths Forstner bit that I already had and I cut the holes that size. That's the, uh, the mortise, I guess. So use the same tenon and now it's super tight. That's exactly what I want. And that's what I used for this. And it might even stand up. Maybe, if I'm lucky. Oh, look at that. That's a good sign. Okay, got one side done. Time for the next side. I also cut all my slab boards to a length of 52 inches. Why will be more apparent later on. Well, I don't have a power tool that can put notches in these boards, so I've got to do it the old-fashioned way. Hammer and chisel. This technique was not only slow, but inaccurate as I had no reference on how deep to go. To fix this, I set my meter saw to leave three quarter of an inch of thickness and cut a guideline. This worked out a lot better, as all I needed to do was chisel a gentle curve to meet the guideline. Time for another coffee.
Well, the end of another day, here's how far I've got. I've glued this together. It seems really strong. Uh, I've also put this back piece here. It's just sitting there. I haven't glued it. Uh, but that gives me a reference point right now. And these are the ones that I notched out. One there. One there. And the last one up front. Now this last one, it, it's warped. It was out in the sun today and it actually warped on me. So I'm going to have to work on that. And uh, I'll peg these together. There is a knot in one side. I guess that's where the peg's going to be. Next step is the back. I'm not going to fasten this uh, on until I've done the back. And I've got these two posts here. And they're going to go something like that. And I'm just going to balance it hopefully here. There we go. And one like that. That's the concept. But one thing I've really got to be conscious of is I still want this to fit through the sliding doors. So it can't be wider than 26 inches, which is about there. So I'm gonna chop off some of the back, but I gotta make sure when I'm tilting that, I don't go beyond the 26 inches, which is about there. I think I can make it work. So next step, drill the holes for the back posts. I drilled perpendicular to the surface at the beginning and then angled the cut once the hole was started. I also took advantage of the tenon taper by carving out a little more on one side. This allowed the back piece to slide under and be locked in place. Well, it's the morning of the third day and I think this is the one I'm gonna get it all done. I've uh, secured the posts in the back. They're glued in. I'm just waiting for it to dry. And I've also made notches on the back pieces. The next step is securing the seat itself. Now it'd be nice if I could use the tenons from the tenon cutter just to use as pegs, but these are way too big, especially along the back there because they're one and a half inches. I think I'm gonna make my own pegs instead. Now, one of the greatest deals I got like decades ago, I think about 20 years ago, was this set of Forstner bits at a tool shop. It was a Boxing Day sale. I paid $20 for all of these and I've never regretted it. And I'm going to use these to drill the holes, but for the pegs, I've got the upper part of the sapling, you know, where it's really narrow and I've whittled this down. And because it's really nice and round and straight, I can just make these into pegs and then just find a Forstner bit, which is a little smaller so I can just force them in. That's the plan. I think it should be an easy thing to do and I can finish this off. X marks the spot. This size dowel is close to a 7 8 inch Forstner bit. Time for a little test. It's glue time. A little gorilla goes a long way.
Clean up the surplus glue and then let it dry. With the glue dry, I can now cut off the tops of the pegs. I use a flush cut saw for this. One of my boards was missing a knot. No worries, a little glue and a branch and stick it in the hole. A slice with the flush cut saw and nobody would know it wasn't the original. Time to get rid of excess baggage. And nobody likes splinter butt, so better do a little sanding. I used some leftover polyurethane stain and varnish from my kitchen project to help preserve the wood from the elements. And it makes it look a little better too. And one final coat of clear poly to give it a little sparkle. Well, the gloves are off, tools are down, it's time to reveal my new bench. Well, here it is. Finish isn't bad, it's not too rough, no splinter butt. I kind of like the color. It's woodsy, it's earthy, it's not exactly the same as everything else. I wanted it a slightly different tone. Good back support, room for two, maybe three. It would actually be a really good place if it wasn't so darn hot out to get a tan, but I think that'll be maybe for October, because right now it's a little too hot. It's water resistant, should be fine. But how is it inside? Let's find out. Oh yeah. Well, it does fit. Although it was a little heavy. Now, where should I put it?
I think this should be perfect. I get a fantastic view. It's close to the wood stove and there's still enough room to get up the ladder to the loft. Now, although it's inside, it's still a bench. It's not a couch. It needs something to convert it into a couch. And this is the link to my old A-liner. Now it's a couch. And these were the cushions for my A-liner. The very first video I did, like seven years ago, was adding more space to the A-liner, and I did it by reducing the bed. I had to make new cushions, and I've kept these for seven years. Now they have a purpose, and it makes my couch very comfortable. I'm gonna love this. Well, for me, this bench was a success. It's exactly what I needed. I can use it inside or outside. And I used salvage materials that would have been thrown away. Um, you know, it makes me happy when I can recycle. And this was the perfect recycling project. It wasn't that difficult once I understood what I was doing. It did take a lot of tools and uh, you know if anybody wants to try something like that take note of that. You might have to maybe rent a few things. I wouldn't buy everything. Uh, and as far as the tool I did buy specifically for this project, the do-it-yourself log furniture tool kit by Lumberjack Tools, it is a quality product, you know? I mean, it's well made. Um, it's, uh, it, I mean, all the stuff you get in the box is well worth it. But um, I got mixed reviews. I guess, first of all, uh, I couldn't build the entire bench out of mortise and tenon. I had to uh, use pegs for the, for the back and, and the uh, seat. Uh, but also, I couldn't really use it for pegs. And that was just the, the choice. That one and a half inch diameter was way too big for me for pegs. And because I was using really soft wood, I couldn't use the one and a half inch uh, Forstner bit that came with it. But other than that, I think I will use it again, definitely. And uh, if you can get it on sale or something, it would be worthwhile. So the only real beef I have about this is the way they advertised it. Because if you look at the picture, to me it looks like they're trying to advertise it as a child's toy. This is not a child's toy. I mean, believe me, if you want to give it to a teenager or something, you've got to make sure it's adult supervision because that can do some major serious damage. To me, this is not a child's toy. It's an adult toy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my others as well. And I hope my ideas for a combination bench and couch inspire you to try a similar project. Come on, get those old tools out!